Hello there everybody, Sabonai2 AK Nightmare, and welcome back to Dies Irae Amantes and Mentes. Now, in the last episode, we had ourselves a, I'd say we had ourselves a little bit of a moment with Himuro wearing a very bizarre outfit, which one of you guys was kind enough to kind of, uh, explain that to me. Serial commenting with, Himuro's weird outfit is her outfit as sonin kind. It's a robe for someone meant to be sacrificed. That's a very weird sacrificial robe, I'm just gonna say. And, uh, the whole idea about, uh, it kind of only just now hit me. Giving birth. I don't like the way that sounds. Especially if it's somebody with Kasumi. That kind of scares me a little bit. Kasumi Ayase thought. She was trying to find out what it was she could do even at the very last moment. She was not arrogant in any way. She didn't think she could do anything all that overambitious, nor did she come up with any ideas of the like. For better or for worse, she knew fully well how average she was. But neither was she the type to lose spirit. She considered all realistic solutions that she could reasonably carry out in this situation. Ah, oh, this damn music box. In a way, her method could have been labeled a compromise. She would first imagine a conclusion she liked, then predict any obstacle she would need to overcome to make that a reality. Was it feasible or not? If it was, what about the odds of success? She wasn't exactly great at theoretical thinking, but she nonetheless did her best with utmost earnestness. The most desirable result would be no one dying at all, of course, or things getting resolved peacefully without conflict. Yeah, that's not gonna- oh shit, what the hell just happened? You guys really saw nothing. But she knew that was most likely impossible. After all, several people had already died to even reach this stage. But even so, Kasumi wanted to keep the list of casualties from growing any longer. Others may have called her naive and stupid for that, but she didn't believe that not acting towards the best conceivable conclusion was the right way to go. So even though that prior conversation had not been the most intelligent course of action, she had still chosen to do it. She never believed she could persuade Valeria Tarifa. She was never an eloquent speaker to begin with, and her opinions and tenets were probably little but nonsense to the priest. Her few days were no match to the weight of sixty years he bore, and even if that was not the case, Changing another's mind with words was already a nigh-impossible feat in human society. How could she even entertain that, when she couldn't even change the mind of a boy she saw almost every day? But though Kasumi held no illusions of conveniently changing someone's convictions and views, she wondered if it was perhaps possible to reach, if only slightly, into their heart. She wondered if it could perhaps, in some way, end up influencing the outcome if the absolute worst truly came to pass. It was wishful thinking, but Kasumi didn't give up on that possibility. And no one would be in the worse for trying at this point. Whoa! Then there was her current plight. She couldn't speak or move. And to an outsider, it might have looked like she was out cold, but she was actually very much conscious and could both see and hear. Oh my god, I just realized. She's like chained on a cross. She's, she's fucking crucified here. I guess it makes sense considering the whole, you know, details with these characters getting the stigmata brands and all that. I guess it makes sense. She couldn't understand how it was possible, so she decided not to think about it. She had a more important she had more important matters to consider anyway. Ren was on his way. He'd come after her, so she was fretting once again about what she should do. Regardless of how things turned out, it would not be a happy ending. She didn't want Ren to die. She couldn't bear the thought of it. She didn't want to see him get hurt either. But in that case, how was she to win? Let Valeria Trifa die? Dame. She muttered that in a voiceless whisper. She didn't want to force Ren to kill someone. Besides, he was up against the man who was like Rei's father, so she couldn't let him. Ever. 
then. Thus, she had to stop Valeria Ter Father Tarifa somehow. She knew the idea was far beyond the capabilities of someone like her. her his shell was harder than iron. If there was something that could break through those curtains and reach him, it would be... She pondered what could reach his heart. She had a feeling she was the only one who could. Though why, she didn't know. It defied reason, but she couldn't help inexplicably believing in that baseless assumption. That faith was what had led her here. There was no other way for her to put things back in their place and atone. So she had to hurry and figure out just what it was exactly. The doors opened, revealing her rather impatient white knight. He looked up at her with a seriously desperate look on his face. She was happy, but she wanted to apologize. She was mad, but also sad. She was grateful he'd worried about her. Sorry she'd caused trouble for him. But why couldn't he have just stayed put and waited? It pained her to see Ren getting hurt. Yes, she was in pain. Oh. It felt like the contractions of labor. She'd figured she'd be going through this sort of experience someday, but... Sup, bitch! Uncrucify my girlfriend before I rip your dick off! But she'd always wanted to give birth to a child in the normal way, between her and the man she loved. Not how her great-grandmother was forced to. She still wished to fulfill that happy dream, so she prayed with all of her heart for him to live. Then I'll rip your dick off. Easy as that. And then I'll shove it so far down your throat that when you cough it'll sound like Beethoven. She didn't want him to say that when he was shedding tears inside. I. She didn't want to force Ren. To bear that cross again. She had to fulfill her goal to coming to this church as soon as possible. At this rate, she would just end up nothing but an idling fool. So no. She didn't want that. I said that in a low voice to urge the girl behind me to stop. I didn't know just how powerful Father Toriva was. But he was clearly not an opponent to be taken lightly. I need to face him with my full strength. Also, is it just me, or did his color palette just shift like got a little bit paler? <laughs> Come on, you are literally standing there naked. I need you to get the hell out. It's gonna be very distracting. Good. I could tell she nodded. Now everything was ready to go. All I had left to do was defeat the priest. I hadn't completely figured out how I was going to do that, but I knew for sure that I'd be killed if I wasn't fully resolved. I had to rid myself of all worldly thoughts. Mari. Yes! I called out to my right arm, forming my blade. Marie hadn't shown herself to me in a while, but I can never forget her. I'd probably need to settle things with her somehow once this was all over. I took up a fighting stance, but Father Tripa just kept standing there, completely unharmed. Unarmed, my bad. Was he that confident? No, it was more than that. I couldn't sense any intent to fight or kill from him. Wilhelm, Rusalka, Sakura, and Kane had been absolutely brimming with those, so this had taken me aback. This had me taken aback. It looked like he had no motivation whatsoever. However... Oh dear, he's just that confident. What? Oh. 
I'm getting like an Ein's Owl goon from this guy feel. Feel from this guy. Whoops. I forgot. I got dyslexic. Father Tarifa closed the gap between us with a single, almost casual step. He then continued casually as though we were having a friendly chat at a cafe. So, this <laughs> hand, I'll show you the first one. This is the last one. I'll show you the last one. Did you get the way of the way of Those words lowered the firing hammer within me. I didn't need to hesitate. All my strength. Oh boy. At that precise moment, I swung my guillotine. My blade connected with his bared neck, however. Yeah, I knew that was gonna be the case. <laughs> what the hell was going on? Father Tarifa was totally defenseless and I hit him head on, so how? He was uninjured. Completely unharmed. I couldn't cut a single tear into his skin. I, d I hadn't hesitated at all. And the guillotine Marie dwelled in was undoubtedly among the sharpest things in this universe. So, what was this bullshit? I'd seen the phenomena unfold before me with my own eyes, yet I could only think of it as something out of the nightmare. So kind of. Slightly. Not really. Doesn't surprise me, though. I didn't even describe it. Even if it hadn't been a killing blow, a clean hit like that should have left at least a scratch. This was just like back then. ええ、そうですね。戦いにおいて最も恐るべき事態とは、己の技が何一つとして効かぬということ。火器では殺せぬ。刃物も効かぬ。物理を超越した耐久力。我々が世界の敵と呼ばれながらも。この60年闇に存在できた理由はこれだ。Ooh, I like this music. Kind of, it's, it's it's basically church organs, but basically a church from hell, which kind of is fitting considering this guy's a priest. おのおのが一にしてレギオン。黒煙卓の戦機を害する対人武器など存在しない。Even the most efficient of guns and blades can only produce a single kill with a single attack. Using them against a being that consists of thousands of souls is equivalent to trying to break a rampart with a needle. I knew that. I really did, but still. I was supposed to be operating according to their rules and everything. You are basically level 10, while I am level 2000. That's how minuscule your power is. I guess that would be the proper term, yes? Uh oh. The next moment, my entire vision was filled with an approaching fist. I immediately guarded and managed to deflect the artless backhand chop done in the same manner one would swat a fly. Bewildered by the unbelievable turn of events, I put some distance between us, but Father Tarifa did not pursue. Carbon?身近なところでは鉛筆の芯だ。ひどく脆い。しかし、ダイヤモンドも同じ炭素でできている。この違いは何か。Their composition? It was how fused they were. In other words, even if they had the same mass, the more condensed one was harder. Even a piece of paper could become as hard as stone if crushed to its utmost limits. It was indeed a simple concept, so simple that I could form no objection to his reasoning. This man, Valeria Tarifa, was merely... Tamashin. 
That mass surrounding his body, his vessel, was far greater than any other I'd faced up to until this point. And then the man who held absolute confidence in his endurance took to the offensive. His chop was slow. My blade danced in the air like a flash of light, looking like it would chop off his wrist, but he took no damage yet again. We connected with each other, a bizarre clash of blade against bare hand. But it didn't end there. Well, to be fair, I kind of did slightly meet him, so... Though we were exchanging blows, Father Tarifa spoke in a dispassionate voice. Reinhardt Heidrich, the leader of the Obsidian Round Table whom I'd seen once before. His menace and paranormality did indeed leave deep scars on my heart. Well, he certainly was terrifying. I recalled Sakurai, who was cursed by that very same fear. Even I was scared of Reinhardt. However, it had nothing to do with what was happening right now. I strafed to the side with an angry roar, kicked off the wall, and charged at the priest. If he had extraordinary defense, then there was no point in varying up attack spots. In other words, I focused on one point. I'd chip it until I could shove a needle down his throat. It went without saying that I was targeting the spot where my blade's killing strikes manifested the most. His neck. I filled the strike with all my power, but as expected, I couldn't hurt him at all. It was fine. I didn't care. If one strike didn't work, I'd just keep attacking until it would. My continuous chain of attacks all hit the same spot accurately, not a single millimeter off. I kept pounding him like a nail with a hammer. And yet... What about Mercurius? Although Tarifa slowly raised his hand overhead as if to swat an annoying fly, he then brought his fist down. I bent my head backwards to dodge, getting a scrape on the tip of my nose for the trouble, and swung for his t this tall figure's proportionately long arm. I reflexively caught his elbow in a double arm lock, but it didn't budge an inch, as if it were made of steel. He then cast me aside like a heap of wooden scraps. The chamber of the obsidian round table. This deepest level of the church was likely used as their headquarters. I considered how I could break out of my current plight, as I hung from the wall I had slammed into, overlooking the panoramic view. The priest's endurance was on a level far beyond me. Even if I kept attacking the same spot over and over again, he wasn't a statue. He would move, fight back, and retaliate. Judging from his attacks, his abilities in single combat were about on the same level as Sakurai's, and certainly below Wilhelm. Still, it was an incredibly difficult it was incredibly difficult to mount an offense against an opponent with no need to protect himself. I couldn't just keep focusing on one point forever, as he would fight back. Gonna use Beria or I had no choice but to up the number of my attacks. I would land a thousand strikes in the time it took Father Talifa to land ten. In other words, the trump card that beat Rusalka and Kane. A creation figment. I would manifest it right here and now one more time and master it. That was my only choice, but... Father Talifa declared that nothing I tried would work on him, with 
unchanging serenity. レオンハルトは米中尉はあれらはすなわち己の誓い己の常識己の価値観を持って普遍的に一条世界を侵食する祈りです you know, if I even try to use Beria, the one thing that I'm afraid of is what his Beria would be. Kirumaniyoru how dare you call out my belief in the supernatural, you son of a dick! Nichijoe Lisa how long had it been since I'd stopped seeing Marie and hearing her voice? What have I what had I been doing to her during that time? So I, who hadn't been facing Marie, who was practically the definition of extraordinary, couldn't attain a creation figment? She got it. Couldn't be. I refused to accept it. I merely resumed my assault on Father Trifa, hoping to erase the anxiety welling up within me. <laughs> むしろ誇るべきだ。己は狂人にあらずと凡庸な世界を愛し、そこに身を置くことを幸せとする。Sorry. Are, Are you telling me that I have to be thoroughly insane to fully utilize this freaking on an air bay? Well, with how crazy this story is, I think it's already succeeding. Who knows, I might have waken my own on an airbay. I swung my blade down with a roar, but as always, it left not a single scratch on the priest. その先にあなたの日常があるとでも? そこに広がるのはグラズヘイム終わらない殺戮の地平があるだけだ No, who needs Muspelheim or Niflheim? We got Gladheim. 人としてボンプとして愛すべき花と死の運命を共にするその方がはるかに気が利いているというものでしょう <laughs> well, the Tarifa's words weren't making any sense. All I understood was that my attack still had no effect on him. God damn it, why? How many souls did it take to build up that bullshit armor? Plot level. He devoured a plot of souls. Well, the Tarifa didn't let the moment where my attacks grew monotonous pass, and slapped my cheek, knocking my brain back and forth. I spat out a bloody shattered tooth. He just beat his fucking pimp slapped you and knocked out a tooth. His next hit was to my solar plexus. And then my heart. My ribs broke, my skin ripped, and my organs creaked. I was knocked into the wall again with a new wave of pain now assaulting my back. But even so...
Though choking on bloody vomit, I got up on my knees and glared at my foe. Valeria Tarifa. He crossed the line of substituting Sonenkind, despite acting as the Obsidian Table's temporary leader. It was clear from his speech and conduct that he did not desire for Reinhardt's return. And what was he thinking? What did he want? Why was he doing this? Whether it was being made immortal or wishing the dead back to life, those were wishes that should have been accomplished by the grace of Reinhardt's return. And if he was a rather avoiding the Golden Blessing itself, if distancing himself from that from it was his goal, then he should never have opened any of the swastikas to begin with! Yet he led the charge towards making that ritual come to pass, and at the eleventh hour chose Kasumi, the inferior Sonin kind, as the womb for its completion. It just didn't make any sense at all. None of his actions had any logic behind them. Since I wouldn't even entertain the notion of losing Kasumi, there was no way I could ever see eye to eye with this bastard. But the future he was aiming for didn't make a lick of sense no matter how I looked at it. His narrow eyes fixed on Himuro, watching over us without a word, then shifted to the crucified Kasumi. Oh。不死身になりたいならそれに見合った数の魂で補強していただく。今現在の我々が有している魂はあくまでも燃料であり鎧。自己本人の魂は単一のままであり人の限界領域を突破できない。so if I'm getting this mentally right, I'm probably not. Are you telling me that you are intentionally using Kasumi, who is inferior to Himuro in a way, to summon a weakened Reinhardt to defeat him? Is that what I'm getting here? <laughs> たとえ魔導を極めてもその発動を抑え込むのは そうした自傷行為なのかもしれない。故にそこから逃れるため、斧が魂を揺るぎない強度に変える。これが黄金。まずはその一。そしてその二は。うん。師匠。そうですね。That was what he meant by the size of the sacrifice. A bargain that could never be carried out on even scales. For example, let's pretend human lives were money. The souls of your loved ones might have amounted to fortune to you, while strangers hardly substitute pocketed change. That was just how human nature was. So to get back the 100 million yen you dropped, you'd have to scrape together 100,000 1,000 yen notes. That was how it worked. I can understand that. However... Father Tarifa looked down on me, sighed as though to ask why no one else understood and continued. He spat out those words with a scornful laugh. His smile writhed miserable. He confessed the ominous truth. Sonin 
不死を望めば吸収され蘇生を望んでも吸収されるそこで彼の分身奴隷となって終わらない戦争に駆り出されるまま英語に解放されないこれを我々はバルハラという無限の死者であふれ返り無限に膨れ上がっていく修羅の世界だハイドリ卑怯の創造以下に城と呼ばれるものがそれなのですよジーゼス黄金錬成とはその無限再生を城の外でも行うこといや城を外に流れ出させることですかなどちらにせよその瞬間に全世界が地獄と化す。My brain. 彼は解き放たれたが最後破壊の君たる業に従い全てを飲み込み始めるでしょう善は子子は善世界が彼で彼が世界だそしてそこに住まう我々は皆ハイドリ卑怯の一部になる奴隷としてねジーズ正直冗談ではない話だ I see with a big smile plastered across my face It was far beyond the level of a joke. If what he was saying was true, then the vague fear and anxiety Sakura I felt was all too well founded. ザミエル教とシュライバー教は強靭な悪魔の先祖になることを最高の誉れと思っているなど常軌を逸する思考でしょう。Oh, I mean, I could, yeah, I can kind of believe that Schreiber would probably definitely be insane from that little cutscene we saw way, 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 way at the beginning. And Samuel? That, okay, beauty mark lady is also insane, but Makina? No. Huh. That kind of just gives me, makes me more curious about Makina. Ma, Moshka Stara Bay Atarimo, Kareda Tonaji Kanse Nano Kamoshide Masenga, eh? Well, Bay is Bay, so. You any? What does she wa Ketsdan Stanoda? Father Tarifa walked up to me with a blank smile. He lifted me by the nape of my neck and continued in a sinister voice. Baru Harano Dio Stanado. 起こすわけにはいかぬでしょう Jesus! とはいえ私にも望みがあるかつてハイドリ卑怯に奪われたものを取り返したいではどうするかあーすでに城の一部と化している銃の花彼らを救い出さねばならない。おう。You mean the. Oh, the children? The floor cracked, collapsed, and sent fissures running through the obsidian table. It was almost as though he preferred destroying this room over causing me damage. His voice sounded as though it was coming from a broken radio. 城を招き寄せる穴。スワスチカという参道と増年金とという母体これが完全ではいけない出産が滞りなく進んでしまえば地獄の産声が流れ出すそうなってはもう誰にも止められないだから彼女だカスミ、The Incomplete Sonenkind She was not a vessel to burk the castle. She was my childhood friend, a woman most precious to me. Shiza. Ie. Taiji no chi ga hon no itteki hodo shitatari ochiru teedo de yoi. Sore de watashi no negai wa kana. Ma, sono kawari. Shambara no suasu chika ni sasagerare ta subete no tamashi ga motte ikareru koto ni nari masu ga. Shinpai wa irimasen yo. 何度も同じことをしてあげましょう
私は償い続ける罪人だ己が罪を忘れはしなし二度と逃げたりしないと誓った逃げてはダメだ逃げてはダメだ逃げてはダメなんですよ本当に Dude, it, it's kind of hard to understand what you're saying when you keep bashing my head and talk. よくないよくないことが逃げた先には待っているだから私はこの罪から目をそらさない未来へを永遠に繰り返しますよ繰り返しますよ繰り返しますよ繰り返しますよ殺して生き返らせ殺して生き返らせ殺して生き返らせて殺す殺す奪い取り戻して繰り返す Jesus! 作って壊して作って壊して永遠と同じことを作ったり壊したり<笑>しかし途中で飽きたらどうするんですかねまだ最初の1回目なのに大変ですよまったくこれは<笑> Jesus! 創造と破壊略奪と贈与生と死の繰り返しなのですよそれが私の愛を誓った聖堂なればこれはねえ神への道に通じるとは思えませんかね私は無限に奪って無限に与えるどこかの誰かと全く同じではないですか私はあの方に届きますかね彼の代行として責務を果たしていると言えますよね Dude, I can barely understand what the hell you're saying. You just keep bashing me down. So, the demo of Shirio Kakawata Shinokoto. You could see Mother Sage and other Toyobu Deska. Korehodo Kamini Junji Tayu Konoata Shu Karu Kraftova. It's what you know, Hikarita to you know, Deska. I think this might be the maddest I think I've heard this guy. He slammed my head into the floor for I don't know which time. My vision has grown all red, and static flooded my ears. My skull felt like it was about to crush under the maddened priest's grip. <laughs> Yet. I, I can see, I can see stars. Could, could, could you, could you repeat? Oh God, could you, could you repeat that? Oh. I am still one of the demons. The Lord of the Lord of the Lord. laughed as he spoke. He declared his reasoning to be perfect. Yet his entire existence revolved around his fear and hatred for Reinhardt. It was nothing but a massive contradiction of admiration and yearning. Father Tarifa was attempting to avoid the emanation of Valhalla while also trying to create a knockoff version of it. All of it was borrowed, not a single hint of originality within. This guy was merely. <laughs> Oh, did that piss you off? That one sentence finally sent his incessant pummeling of me to a halt. Father Tarifa considered me with an expressionless look on his face. You'd expect the bastard would have escaped hearing loss as he did aging. I could see his pupils at this distance, and they were unstable. Shifting from red to black to gold. Ooh, that's gotta hit a. That's gotta sting. An imitator. <laughs> the word suited him perfectly. She'd said that would be an insult to the lives of the ones she loved. That was why she was still here, not looking away from a thing. All of them girls that hadn't lived even half of the bastard's age, yet they violently stood and struggled against dark fate with their own ideals in their hearts. I didn't know what happened in his past. 
Not a thing about the despair, tragedy, and regrets he'd faced. But there was one thing I did know. One thing I could say for sure. He'd been crushed by his past. Father Tunifa threw me with all of his might as soon as I finished. I leaned on the table I'd been thrown onto, refusing to be beaten. I saw the wicked priest looking at me as though he was staring at something inexplicably mysterious. What, struck a nerve? He son she sounded befuddled, bewildered and genuinely uncomprehending. You're a literal walking contradiction! そして不滅の釜焼きだ。我が望みを得るために he placed a hand on his chest as if boasting about his faith in the honored airbag. He confessed that the divine vessel was Reinhardt Heydrich's body. That certainly explains why he looks different than the priest picture that I saw way back in that little flashback. That certainly explains so this is this is literally Reinhardt's body. あの方もそんなことなど見透かされておられる。He confessed that even his own body was but borrowed goods. The divine vessel gazed down on my powerless body. An obstacle he intentionally set up for himself. It was preordained so that he would only descend to the mortal world once I, or someone like myself, would eliminate this man, his imitator. ならば良し。私は英語に難航不落であり続ける。何度サラトストラが現れようと、その都度撃滅し続けましょう。楽しませようと言われたのだから、力の限り踊るまでです。どんな敵も作法も偶然でさえ跳ね抜ける。不滅
I didn't call him a loser because he shifted blame to Rhino and his own inability to escape the bastard's grasp. That shit didn't matter. I returned his gaze to the glare and spoke up. Father Tarifa's hands froze. Nani? Atoning, salvation, lack of choice. All he said about killing and resurrecting ad infinitum. In other words, deep down, running away was precisely what he wished. Brother Tarifa always smiled. That may have been a mask, but what lay behind it definitely was not the face of suffering. I wouldn't let him deny that he was convulsing with laughter at the very same time he talked about the road to suffering. He was likely so damn happy he couldn't take it. The orgasmic pleasure of being Reinhardt's substitute. The desire to change into gold. With that wish fulfilled, Christoph Lohengrin wanted to keep living in the dream. Damare. Hmm, I'm gonna have to say no. His hand, which almost looked glued to the air, shook. His voice began trembling. Though the shell that was the divine vessel was invincible, what lay behind it was imperfect. If what I was saying was actually getting to him, then like hell I'd shut up, dumbass! <laughs> gotcha, bitch! He punched downwards, but I jumped to the side, evading the blow. I knew he'd beaten me up to hell and back, but while Father Tarifa had ridiculously high defense, his attacks were nothing to write home about. It was true I'd be in trouble if I kept on hitting me, but at least I could still stand. If, say, Kane or Wilhelm had hit me as many times as he did, I probably would have already been dead by now. In other words, in there most likely lay the Divine Vessel's weak point. <laughs> Although it was thoroughly risky bet, it was my only joint chance of winning. He boasted a unique style of perpetually maintaining himself in Yetzida state, and all the attacks earlier were probably the extent of his powers in this state. In short, he wielded a dull blade that couldn't kill me with dozens of attacks. But in exchange, he had invincible armor that I couldn't put a single scratch on no matter how hard I tried. However, since a creation figment was the ultimate trump card, it would perhaps swap his attack and defense once activated. In exchange for an unparalleled sword, he would be stripped of armor. So I had to get him to draw that sword. It was the only way. Yeah, is that pissing you off? I pointed my finger at Father Tarifa. That bastard's attribute was destruction. Then he too must have craved apocalypse. I guided my finger to the other side of the room. Yes, I was pointing at none other than Himuro, who would have been silently watching our fight all this time. She was not the kind to show emotion on her face, but that didn't mean she had no feelings. She regarded her father figure with firm, resolute, and trembling but unwavering eyes, trying to figure out what the man who was trying to save her wanted. Could he really? Could he say for sure that the reason he was trying to prevent the castle from emanating was because he cared for Himuro and wanted to protect her? The towering frame of the priest wavered, 
his shoulders trembling as his imploring eyes fixed on Himuro. Himuro finally spoke up. Oh. Oh shit, I did not actually think about that. Ah, damn it, she figured me out. Fuck! Mother Tarifa answered in a trembling voice, stepping back as though trying to run away. Was everything truly that simple? Himuro's question had made him realize a fatal pitfall in his plan. <laughs> that moment when he, he, he thinks his perfect plan it suddenly starts falling apart. He's like, oh, oh shit, I did not think about a contingency plan. Uh, uh, oh, fuck. Can, can you guys give me just a minute? Okay, I know you want to kill me, but could you please give me a minute? I gotta figure this out. Meaning the endless cycle he spoke of will never come to pass. I'd hesitated whether I should say it in front of Himuro, but in the end, she beat me to it herself. If Father Turifa killed me here and used Kasumi, one of the bloodlines would end regardless. There was no way he would have overlooked something as simple as that. まるで考慮していない。暴流が消えたら、私に作らせるつもりなんでしょう。二人以上産ませて、敵が悪い方を使う気なんだ。リザとは逆に。でも、ダメだよ。She glanced at me then continued. 藤井君を死なせたら、私だって相手がいなくなっちゃうもの。<laughs> Himuro's voice was admonishing, her desire to persuade Tarifa seeping through every word. She was probably speaking to protect me and Kasumi, and above all else, save Father Tarifa. No matter his motives and methods, she couldn't bear to watch the man who was trying to protect her be consumed by madness. Thinking it was her last chance to change his mind, she earnestly urged him to give up. However, with an ominous, ominous composure, the Lydia Trifa spoke in the lowest of voices. Uh, what in the world was going on in his head? Uh, Oh, fuck. Oh, God, that face! <laughs> Swelling in auspiciousness, appealing mask. Once his form, normal smile faded, a look of undulated madness overcame Father Tarifa's expression. It then hit me. I couldn't let him continue speaking. Senpai, Nio! Tarifa easily dodged my rush attack and landed right next to the dumbfounded Himuro. <laughs> I immediately struck back and gave chase, but I was too late. Father Tarifa already opened his mouth. <laughs> I have a really bad feeling I already know what he's gonna say. Repulsive words crawled forth from his mouth. But yours, don't listen to him. He's like a father to you, isn't he? 
His Columbus egg would shatter her very world. Watashi no eye ga. Shinjit Watashi no mono de aru to show me through Niwa Mohaya Soreshka Arimasen. My slash failed to reach him, and by the time it finished its hollow arc, he had already spoken the forbidden words. Watashi no ko uminasai. There it is! And as he spoke, I kind of want to end it here, but I do want to see what his burial, so his... Damn it! Ah, uh, my beloved dearest swallow. Behold this horn, the sword, the ring, and bestow upon him all three. He drew his sword. Valeria Trifer was confident in his victory, invigorated by the joy of being finally released from the many years of anguish. For the horn shall aid him in his time of need. And the sword shall deliver unto him victory most fortuitous. He loved the girl. He loved Teresia. He wished to protect her. As a man once destroyed by the love of oneself, he could not take a step forward before proving that feeling was absolute. And that was what he would do. Since its earliest days, the Obsidian Round Table had one big mystery. Who in the world was the father of the first Sonin kind, Isak? Lisa had taken the secret to the grave, but considering the circumstance, a few things were clear. It had to have been him. No doubt about it. But this ring shall serve to remind him of me. And that was why Tarifa had anguished. His love for Tarisia was that of a father to a daughter, and as such was his interpretation. He had been unable to determine whether those feelings came from himself, his soul, or from him, his vessel. But that no longer mattered. <laughs> so Godfrey himself may know the name of he who freed you from torment and disgrace. If this love was but a pollutant contaminating his flesh, then the act of incest should have been impossible. That was the swiftest, most reliable way of verifying the truth. Yes, indeed, he knew he was perfect. No flaw tainted his existence. He was not mad. In his current state, he could still save everyone and everything. He was not shifting the blame on the beloved children whose lives he had let slip through his fingers. Far from it. He was perfectly capable of loving people. He could see the same things they did, hear the same things they did, cry as they did, and smile as they did. That sound effect. Creation figment. So he wanted to drive his rival in love from the stage right here and now. He knew full well that the said rival had been waiting for the moment a chink opened up in his armor, but... To the realm of God. His opponent had already lost, for he had underestimated just how incredible this sword was. None who witnessed it lived to tell the tale. So free, sworn knight of gold! Whoa! Dude! He had madly craved to be someone else. The spreading golden light in its shape was the spear of destiny that Reinhardt Hydra himself had wielded. The bout took but a moment, literally the blink of an eye. Hmm? Whoa, the fuck was that? After a long search, Kasumi had finally found someone capable of putting a stop to the priest. She had been so deeply focused on her task, she hadn't perceived the conversation in bow that had unfolded below her. But it was not mere coincidence she had succeeded with that exact timing. Tarifa had momentarily unfastened the Divine Vassal's armor to summon the lance from the castle, and the souls swirling within it had held just what Kasumi needed. 
She might not have been a legitimate vessel, but it was still only because she was the current Sonin kind that she had been able to pull this off. Truly a miracle that only Kasumi could have created. Their voices reached him. The ten flowers that the man had once chosen to be plucked as compensation for fleeing from his own shadow. Forever entrapped and swirling in the castle, they fired these very words at the man who had forsaken them. Oh! <laughs> oh. Oh. How ridiculous. I am not crying. If they had cursed his name, he could have accepted it. If they had told him to fight, he would defeat even God. But, but what in the world was this? Are you pitying me? No words could describe the emotions that bloomed in him at that moment. In a way, it was indignation. In a way, it was relief. They had to hate him. He had committed an unforgivable sin. He had to repent for the rest of eternity. He had gone through those past 60 years under that one belief, that one assumption. He felt as though his motive for everything had shattered. <laughs> then what am I? If he truly wasn't shifting the blame, if he truly wasn't using those poor children as an excuse, then... Wasn't he supposed to do his all to send the souls of his beloved children off to heaven, rather than trying to become gold? Overthrowing Reinhard Heydrich. Had he merely been running away from that choice? His hesitation, the wavering in his faith had been born from that. The Holy Lance ran forward, striking Ren. However, as doubt sprung forth in the user's craving to be the Gold's twin, the supposedly perfect, accurate, and fatal spearhead missed by a slight margin. For only Reinhardt Hydra could probably handle that most sacred of weapons. All had gone amiss, the moment was absolute devotion to becoming alternative gold was disrupted. The lance missed the core of Ren's soul. It pierced only one. Oh, fuck! The Maiden of the Twilight was torn away from her vessel, but there was a slight moment of time before her soul completely returned to her world. The guillotine itself was still in perfect form. Though its spiritual density had grown thinner, it hadn't disappeared. It was not in a state to seriously injure the Knights of the Obsidian Round Table any longer, but... With his armor now abandoned, Trif had bared a fatal weakness. As such, even though he put his entire soul into dodging it, the grip of a hand stopped him. That action spelled the conclusion of the battle. Shit! <gasps> Fuck! My sense of self was collapsing. I was losing all sensation. I felt a scorching pain in my chest that tried to bake my very consciousness. I could still tell my weapon had found its target. I had pierced Validia Trifa. Once he shifted his powers from defense to attack, I had skewered the supposedly indestructible divine vessel. But that was all I could tell. Senpai. Was she? What happened to Marie? Was I standing on my own feet? Answer me. Kasumi. Where? Where are you? The moment my blade vanished, I lost the last of my